Hello, everyone. We are the second place uh, team imagination research. And first of all, thanks to AMO Price, XTX Markets, and the uh, Cargo team for uh, organizing this great competition. So our team uh, consists of three members, uh, Yi Chen Yu, Xie Feini, and Zinan Lin. And uh, my name is Yi Chen Yu, and I'm an undergraduate student at Tsinghua University in China. And Xie Feini is a research track, research track assistant professor at Tsinghua University. Uh, who is also uh, the project leader of our team. And finally, Jinan Lin is a senior researcher at Microsoft Research, who is working on the fundamentals and applications of generative models, such as diffusion models and apps. Uh, so our overall solution can be divided into three sections. Uh, the first is reasoning-oriented training to improve the reasoning ability of the model. Uh, which includes stage one SFT and stage two DTO with selected data. And the second section is efficiency optimization to improve the efficiency, including selecting a suitable inference engine with quantization and QV cache quantization. And finally, the inference time strategies to uh, improve efficiency reasoning performance trade off, uh, which includes prompt design, self, -consisten self consistency aggregation, sample live and the question live early stopping and some hyperparameter tweaking. So, uh, uh, of course, we have tried many other methods like GRPU model, model merging and other methods, but we will not introduce them in detail due to the time constraints. Uh, so the first two sections of the presentation will be delivered by myself, and the last section will be delivered by Xie Xinyin. So in the first section, uh, in stage one, we applied SFT to further enhance uh, the model's mathematical reasoning capabilities. And uh, we choose DeepSeq's uh, 14B, 14B distilled model as a base model and use the data size combined from less R1 and uh, IMO. So both of them are high quality responses for a hard mass problem generated by DeepSeq R1. And uh, you can see that uh, after training, after Eight epochs training on a single uh, A800 machine, which takes uh, which took 11 hours. The model's reasoning ability improved, but the output lines also increased significantly, and and uh, which we extend the time to solve the problem. Problem, this is not what we design. So, uh, to to re to reduce the output lines of the model, we apply DPO or known as direct preference optimization. Uh, and here in the uh, data prepar preparation stage, we selected the open R1 mice data size. And in this data size, each problem was generated with a two to four reasoning passes by DeepSeq R1. And we, uh, and we, we use the three criteria to fit the DPO pairs. And the Y omega here represents the chosen response, and the Y air uh, represents the rejected response. So the first criteria is preference, we, uh, which means the chosen response should be shorter than half of the uh, rejected response. And the second is lines. Uh, we, we choose the, uh, the, the chosen response should, should not be too short to eliminate the questions that are too simple. And the, uh, finally, the similarity. Uh, which means the similarity between the true uh, response and the rejected response should be less than a threshold. Uh, in this way, uh, the model can more easily line the differences between the chosen one and the rejected one. So finally, we fitted uh, uh, two key pairs for training in the DPO stage. And uh, we use the single uh, eight uh, we use the single A800 machine to train for four epochs on the two data size, which only took 40 hours. Uh, and the table below shows the final results on AIME 25. And we sample uh, 32 times for each question, uh, including direct reasoning 16 times and code solving 16 times. We can say uh, it only took overall uh, 400 A. Uh, 400 a800 machine hours which is really which seems many of the time and besides we, we also tried other methods like with merging so uh, we want to get a stronger model from different checkpoints 
So we use uh, we use the linear in multiple library, and uh, and we and we all we, we did obtain some models that seem to have a strong powerful uh, that 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 seem to show more powerful capabilities. Uh, but due to time constraints, we did not have time to evaluate them on the leaderboard. And in the section, in the second section, we try to uh, improve the efficiency of reasoning. We choose LM deploy instead of VLM to uh, as the beacon of our inference. So uh, we found that compared with VLM, the LM deploy library provides higher uh, throughout and shorter model initialization time. And for quantization, we used the four bit. AWQ quantization and the 8-bit TV quantization include implemented by LM deploy. So in our online test, we found the output token speed of WC KV8 increased by about 20% compared with WC KV16. And, and for the reasoning performance in the local test, we found that the average sample accuracy uh, drops by uh, 5% to 10% compared with FP16. And finally, we choose WCKV8 uh, for our final simulation, uh, which is not worse than WCKV16. Uh, and WCKV4 is very is, is worse, so we, so we did not choose it. So, uh, the, so this is the first two sections. And the uh, third section will be present, presented by my uh, by Xuefenin, so welcome her. Thank you, Yichang. Uh, I'm Xuefenin from Tsinghua University, and I'm, I will uh, give the presentation to our third part of our solution on the inference time strategy. Uh, mm, this slide shows our inference time workflow. For each question, we first prepare two types of prompts, uh, including the COT prompt and the code prompt. Uh, then we will let the LM start batchify generation of multiple samples with its LM deploy engine, which is referred to uh, as the LM generation task in the figure. In the meantime, we will continue to try to extract the answer from the streaming output of each sample, aggregating the answers of multiple samples and judge whether to early stop some generations. And the early stop will happen at two levels. Uh, first, we do sample level uh, early stop by checking upon every n years from the streaming generation iterator and judge whether to early stop the generation of the corresponding sample. Um, the code executor and answer extractor components are used here. Second, we will do question level checking upon the end of every sample when we get an answer and um, judge whether to early stop the generation of all remaining samples of the current question. The answer aggregator component is used here. Note that for each question, we will adjust the speed-related hyperparameters, for example, uh, the total number of sample, samples and some sampling level max time according to the remaining time. But um, this uh, component is not showing this figure. We will skip this uh, detailed strategy in this slide. And uh, this strategy is described in our readme. Mm, next. Okay, let us go into the prompt preparation task. Uh, initially, we will use we use uh, fifteen prompts consisting of seven um, COT prompts and eight code prompts. Uh, for the code prompts, we use the uh, widely used code based reasoning. Uh, the workflow is that we prompt the model to provide Python code to solve the problem, and we extract Python code from the output, create a subprocess to execute the code, and extract answer from the execution results. It's the normal workflow. Uh, and next. Uh, here are some results of our results on prompt preparation. For example, for system prompt choice, we find that diversify system prompt does not help uh, which is um, uh, expected and intuitive as re reasoning models do not follow the system prompts and instructions very well. And for prompt list choice, we in, in our local test, in our validation data set, we find that only using code prompts will result in a consistent but slight improvement than using half COT prompts and half code prompts. However, it does not help the public submission score. So 
we, uh, we just use our half COT and half code prompt list. Uh, for number of samples, in the local test, we find that continue to increasing the sample number will help achieve better results than only use 16 or 15 samples. But due to the limited computing power on the submission platform and our limited submission quota, we do not thoroughly experiment with uh, the best choice of the, of the sample number on the online platform. We just go with 15 for most of our sub submissions. Oh, next. We also analyze how frequently the code prompts will lead to code output, actually lead to code output, and or lead to code error, or lead to uh, a code that can be executed but give wrong answer. I will skip this analysis here, and but um, this analysis is also provided in our document or write-up. Uh, next. OK, uh, next I will describe our sample level early stop strategy. Um, next, uh, first we know that reasoning model will self-doubt a lot after obtaining the answer early. Even it will give out the same answer uh, in the fin uh, in after a lot of self-doubting uh, finally. So, and in most cases, after giving the answer between the uh, pair of sync tokens, the model will re rewrite the solution again. This means that for many samples, the sample answer will occur twice at least for many samples. So we can reduce the wisdom tokens by early stopping the sample generation. Um, there is a reference method called prob in the middle. It inserts a prob after a certain number of tokens. Uh, the prob is, oh, I got the final answer. Uh, and if n consecutive answers have high confidence and consistency, then uh, it will early stop the generation. Mm, next. Um, in our experiment, we find that the prob in the middle method can decrease the generation token length. However, the additional queries uh, will cause the overall latency to, in to increase in our case. It needs further inference optimization. So to simplify our final inference workflow, we don't actively insert prob, just to passively detect the answer. Uh, specifically, after detecting the first code that can run without error, or the first answer in the box, uh, uh, the parenthesis, we early stop the generation process uh, of the corresponding sample. Um, a natural question is that, will this early stop harm the potential of revising a wrong answer to be, the, to be a correct one uh, later? So in the local test, we verify that these cases are not that usual as we might think. Uh, as we can see, the cases where the first answer is wrong and the final revised answer is correct is mm, very rare, which is marked in, in green in these figures. So we go with this sample level early stop solution and don't wait for the second answer or the third answer to check the consistency. Oh, next. Um, then I'll introduce our uh, uh, question level early stop, stop strategy. Um, the difficulty uh, varies across problems, so we aim to uh, avoid spending too much time on easy problems. As shown in this right figure, the output length also varies considerably across samples for a single problem. This suggests that for some problems, we may obtain several correct answers very early, but still need to wait for the longest samples to finish, and this will result in significant waste. So our method is to early stop the generation for the question if enough certainty is achieved by examining existing answers. So specifically, we terminate generation of the question when the majority of the output are, consist are consistent. Oh, next. Um, in our final solution, we just use uh, consistency-based voting to aggregate the final answer, but we also tried LM-based aggregation um, that is, we give several answer choices we get from the multiple samples uh, and the corresponding rationales to the LM, and let the LM to verify each, each one and choose the best one. Uh, in our preliminary experiments, this aggregation method cannot stably achieve improvements. Um, through simple inspection, we, we hypothesis that our fine-tuned model is not good in doing this type of verification. Uh, it is resolving the question in most of the time. So it is not following the instruction that you need to verify the logic of each uh, answer. It is just resolving the question. 
So maybe use an uh, instruction tuned model instead of reasoning model to do the selection will be better. But, uh, but um, uh, using multiple models uh, will cause additional in, uh, like com complexity in the, for the inference pipeline. So we don't further try this. Oh, next. Uh, finally, uh, we show some hyperparameters we use for LM generation here. Uh, actually, we don't know if these uh, parameters are the best. It's just like uh, somehow good uh, um, due to, uh, according to our some sub submissions. Um, next. We also tried some techniques such as penalizing sort switching token in order to avoid the reasoning model freq to too frequently switch between different reasoning sorts without sufficiently exploring each one. But we uh, don't get improvement. But, uh, we, we cannot draw exact conclusion on whether this type of, of uh, methods uh, can work or cannot work because we do not do that type of that sovereign analysis here. Oh, next. Yeah, I think that's all for this part of our solution. Thanks for listening. <laughs>